Today, let's learn about a more advanced probability inequality similar to Markov's and Chebyshev's inequalities. If you haven't already, you may want to watch my videos on those inequalities first. Chernoff bounds are more of an idea rather than a particular inequality. And the idea is let's use a creative extension of Markov's inequality to get even better bounds, meaning smaller probabilities. So let's remember Markov's inequality which states that for any non-negative random variable, the probability that that random variable is at least a is less than or equal to the expected value of x divided by a. And when developing Chebyshev's inequality, we saw that it was really just an extension of Markov's inequality. So the random variable x minus mu squared is a non-negative random variable, so we can apply Markov's inequality to it. So if I want to find out that the probability that the distance of uh, x being at least a away from mu, um, well, I can uh, rearrange that a little bit by turning it into x minus mu squared by squaring both sides and then applying Markov's inequality to that. And that's what Chebyshev's inequality is. And the idea we're going to explore here is why limit ourselves to the random variable x minus mu squared? Why not x minus mu cubed or x minus mu to the seventh power? And why not even more complex functions of x? So let's give it a shot. So this method can be used for lower tail inequalities too, but let's just try to find an upper tail bound similar to Markov's inequality. So if I want to find the probability that x is at least a, I could just multiply both sides by t, where t is some number that's positive. Uh, and the inequality doesn't change. Um, and then if I also apply the exponential function to both sides, uh, that is also the same thing. So e to the xt is a non-negative random variable. So we can use Markov's inequality. And this is really the core of the Chernoff method. We multiply by t and we apply the exponential function. So just applying Markov's inequality here, we get that the probability that x is at least a is less than or equal to the expected value of e to the xt over e to the at. And that thing on top, which we'll call mx of t, is just the moment generating function, or the MGF, of the random variable x. So the probability that x is at least a is less than or equal to the moment generating function evaluated at t uh, divided by e to the at for any t that's at least zero. So let's look at an example with x being a binomial random variable. So let's look at the exact computation of a random variable x, which is the number of heads in 100 coin flips, which we expect to be about 50. So x is a binomial random variable with parameters n equals 100 and p equals 0.5. And I want to know what is the probability of getting at least 60 heads. Well, with a computer, this isn't that difficult, but it does involve a lot of math. And we could compute that number using software like R. And the probability that X is at least 60 is 0.028. Okay, so this is what we have if we have access to a computer. Uh, if I didn't have that, uh, how could I use Markov's inequality? Well, that's a binomial random variable. And I want to know the probability of getting at least 60 heads. And by using Markov's inequality, well, we said that the expected number of heads is just 50. So uh, this is Markov's inequality, and we get that the probability of getting at least 60 heads is less than or equal to 50 divided by 60, or 0.833. So this is a little bit informative. Um, you know, we know probabilities are less than 1, but now I got it down to 0.833. But that's still a far cry away from the true answer, 0 0.028. So this, this doesn't give us a lot of info. It's less than 1, but it's uh, far away from 0 0.028. But let's try the Chernoff method. So the moment generating function for a binomial random variable is 1 minus p plus p to the et, all to the n, uh, nth power. Um, and you could look this up uh, on Wikipedia or something like that if you don't want to derive it yourself. So using the Chernoff bound, uh, we get the probability that x is at least 60 is less than or equal to the moment generating function over e to the 60t. Um, and then plugging in the moment generating function, we get this. And now I also know that n is 100 and p is 0.5. So we're going to plug those numbers in there. But what is t? We still have this t here. 
and uh, it's not defined, right? At the moment generating function, we can put in any t. Now for turnoff, we said t had to be at least zero. Um, so we can put in any value of t here, and this will hold true. So what value of t do we want? Well, let's try t equals two, just a random number. Uh, so if I plug in t equals two, uh, I get a really big number. So I get the probability that x is at least 60, the probability that I see at least 60 heads is less than uh, a billion or something, right? So obviously we know that because the probability is less than one. So this number was not very helpful for us. Not a very useful inequality. You could have told me that. Um, now let's try t equals 0.02. So if I try and plug in 0.02, then I get the probability is uh, less than 0.822. Okay, so now we're about as good as Markov's. This is at least a little bit informative. It's less than 1. Uh, and if I go in between and I try t equals 0.2, and I plug that in there, I actually get 0.223. The probability is less than 0.223. And now we're getting closer and closer to that 0.02 number that we know is the truth. So this is actually helpful. And we tried three random numbers, and this was the best bound we found. But it's probably not the best possible bound. So which t can I choose to make the best possible bound? And how can we choose the best value of t that gives us the lowest probability? So when we, uh, we can rewrite the uh, function here, the moment generating function divided by e to the at. Uh, we can rewrite it as e to the negative at, that's this part, uh, minus the log of the moment generating function, right? So we have the moment generating function, and we just have e to the negative, negative log moment generating function. So that's the moment generating function on top. So this is just a different way to write it. Okay, so the probability x is at least a is less than or equal to this quantity here. And I want to choose the best t, right? Because that's the free variable that I can choose. So we want this bound to be as small as possible. So we want this exponential to be a big negative number, which means I want at minus the log of the moment generating function to be as large as possible. So my goal here is to find the maximum value of this, to find the t that maximizes this for t greater than zero. Now, sometimes we're a little fancy and we call the maximum the supremum. Um, so we could call it the soup, but to keep it easy here, we'll, we'll just uh, say that we're trying to find the maximum so let's try this out. Okay, so here's kind of all of our information, our binomial random variable. We want to find the probability x is at least 60. Here's the MGF. And I know that uh, this is true. This is our turnoff bound. So we want to maximize this function. Well, how do I maximize that function? Uh, well, first, let's plug in all these things. A is 60. Uh, this is the moment generating function. So we're just plugging in the definitions here. Um, and then we're applying some properties of logs. I'm just taking this 100 and bringing it out in front. And now I want to maximize it. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to t and set it equal to 0. And we can do some solving there. And when we solve for t, we get t is equal to 0 0.405. Okay, So not too far away from the 0.2 where we got a pretty good bound. So now I'm going to take this number and I'm going to plug that in to my turnoff bound instead of 0.2. And I get that the probability that x is at least 60 is less than or equal to 0.133, right? Now we're really getting really close to that 0.028. So Chernoff's bound allowed me to find that the probability of this was less than 0.133. And now we have an actually good bound, okay? So the true probability is 0.028. Common sense tells us that the probability is less than or equal to 1. Markov's inequality tells me the probability is less than 0.833. But Chernoff's bound told me the probability was less than 0.1335. Okay, so that's a much better bound, pretty close to our 0.028. And we've been looking at this one version to find upper bounds, uh, but we could also find uh, lower bounds if we had t being negative here. And we could also find multiplicative bounds of this form, where we're wondering what's the probability x is uh, some multiple of its expected value. So sometimes you'll see Chernoff uh, bounds uh, like this, and then it gets a little confusing because you're like, well, did I really learn the right thing when I learned what Chernoff bounds were? Because this looks totally different. Um, but what we have to remember is it's really about the method. We, we still want to multiply by t 
apply the exponential function, and that method can allow us to solve things like this too. So you might see many different versions of Chernoff bounds. And just make sure to multiply by t and exponentiate both sides, and you'll be able to use Markov's inequality to find the Chernoff bound. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.